weather's nice and I'm in the mood to do some crochet. Uh, today I'm working on a piece of wall art. Um, I have this idea, I want to try an experiment. Um, freeform crochet looks beautiful up on a wall, uh, but I'm I, my experiment so far, I don't really know much about framing, about how to get it to be on the wall and look nice. Um, so I've done a little bit of experimenting where I stitch it to a semi-stiff backing and put it on a dowel. But uh, what occurred to me is I should possibly actually go to a professional. Suddenly I realized there are professionals who do framing and they must frame things other than just uh, prints and posters. Um, so I asked some advice from a textile art friend that I have, someone with actual academic training in the matter, so she knows a fair bit more than I do about the range. Um, yeah, and she said there actually are framers that specialize in, uh, um, or do, do a wider range of framing, uh, assorted stuff. So now I know what to look for, uh, even know the Swedish word for it, because I am here in Stockholm, so uh, when I go talk to people about what I need, English isn't always going to do the job. So I'm excited, um, and my plan is to make a couple pieces, not very big ones. I'm thinking like, you know, kind of kind of yay big, like little things, um, but intricate and interesting and very, very busy. Um, partly that's because a small experiment is always a good place to start, and partly it's because uh, I imagine framing a small piece is going to be cheaper than framing an expensive piece. So um, yeah, thinking if I go do that, take it to them, say how much, and then I've at least got my answer. Um, and that will tell me a little bit about whether I need to do a little more of this myself to save money, or um, if it's not too expensive, add it into the cost of the art, um, make five or six pieces, and then maybe just start approaching places where I could, uh, you know, hang them up, um, possibly, possibly sell them. I don't know. Uh, the nice thing about this phase of my life is like I'm not I'm not required to do anything so it's not like I have to be a uh, financially viable artist in uh, three months time or else I have to go back to my office job my life is very up in the air in any case um, so this is uh, this is the experiment right now so um, I have a colorful piece that I have half made and uh, I'm also doing a piece of just all white white on white on white uh, I like the bright colors, I like the intensity, but um, pe people are very taken by uh, white on white, especially around here. Sweden has this this uh, yen for white, I don't know what the deal is, uh, but they do. Also it gives me a chance to show off, um, a showcase, the uh, some of the local wool that I've been spinning. Um, some of this is hand spun, some of this is commercial. Uh, so I can make something nice, make something saleable, and go for it. Right now I'm just doing a top stitch on a spiral. I've got an off-white commercial yarn base, and then a more sort of bright grayish white commercial yarn for the top stitch. I'm just doing chain stitch for this one. Little spiral. While well, I've got this one out, I will add some puff stitches to this one. 
I want a bigger hook for the puff stitches. Oh, I switched to a smaller hook. Obviously not the right choice. To do a circle of puff stitches, I usually do four loops up. I think in this case, because I need everything to be thicker and no holes, I'm going to do five. So I've pulled up my loops, I secure it, and I chain one. So one, two, three, four, five, secure, and chain one. Hmm. No more holes than I'd like in there, but I guess I'll have to put this on a neutral back background. One, two, Secure it, and I'm going to leave just a short end for this because I know uh, I never attach something with puff stitches directly. I always do a border because uh, it's a little hard to attach the puff stitches with these kind of chains in the middle, so I need a little more security. Hmm. Not up close. While I've got this yarn out, I'll make three or four little spots. One of the things I'm going to do with this piece is uh, uh, there's some areas of high detail, a lot of texture, a lot of change, and there's some areas where I'm going to keep it pretty simple and maybe just stick like four or five different spots together. Um, and what that does is gives me a background for going three-dimensional. Because uh, if you're doing something that's just going to be hung up, um, you can do little curly cues coming off, you can make little cups that look like they're, they're uh, I don't know, sea anemones opening up. You can build little, little ridges um, with some uh, pico or something like that. You can do some, uh, some chain loops. And so if you're going to be doing stuff that's, that's uh, going out What's behind it needs to have some variation, but not too much. Right. Now, I've been looking forward to working with this. This is 
it's not uh, it's not excellent quality yarn. Here we go. But um, it is something I made myself. Uh, processed the fleece from raw and uh, did it up on my drum carter, blended it with a little bit of kind of caramel colored silk. So that gave it an interesting uh, kind of sandy color. And you know, my spinning of this stuff needs work. It's a Leicester, not blue face Leicester. The bag just said Leicester, so I'm not uh, a student of breeds. I'm not actually too clear on what that means, what the implication is there. But I do know it's um, similar to blue face Leicester. It's glossy. It doesn't have a really high crimp. Uh, it has a gentle, cr uh, you know, kind of a gentle wave rather than a crimp. Pretty, pretty long staple. So it's so easy to spin it in a way that just crushes the air out of it. And that's mostly what I've done. I'm still very much practicing how to get it right when I'm processing my own fleece. Uh, <clears throat> and spinning these, uh, these long wools. But for wall art, doesn't need to breathe, doesn't matter if it's scratchy, just kind of needs to look nice, and it does look very nice. So this will do fine for this purpose. And what it means is I've got a good use for my practice, practice stuff. And, uh, and that means I can use it and then go again. And this is already, I've already made some, um, <clears throat> the same fleece, I've processed it a different way and spun it a different way. And uh, the next bit turned out much better. Um, I did some, some singles. Usual spacing at the top wasn't working. stitch. Alright, 
does not show too distinctly right now. But I can fix that. I've got some it's silk. It obviously has some silk content. It's shiny. I believe I got it from World of Wool. It's probably blended with something else. So I'm gonna do... I'm gonna try two single crochet in each of the gaps and... no, I'll do three. I think that's what's gonna be needed. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And if you can see, look at the angles there. It's opening that cluster up so I get a nice little point at the top. It's nice. Alright, I'm going to take this piece that I just made and, uh, where's that triple, there we go, attach this spot of triple crochet. Secure my end. Got a little thing here. I'm going to take this is some some reclaimed wool. I'm actually not sure where it came from. It's just a little thin single ply. You can use this to make lace, to knit lace if you want. But I've got a lot of it. I'm not so into knitting lace. So I'm actually, I wound this into a center pull ball and I'm going to work from the inside and outside at the same time. See? Can we see? And that lets me get this at double thickness. Double thickness but unspun should be an interesting texture. Now it looks like uh, a cluster of four is going to cover it, but when I'm doing wool pieces, I kind of want everything to be squashed in together. Because I want to fill in space, I want it to be thicker. So most of the time, whatever it is I'd normally do, I do one extra. So for instance, these little pennies that are uh, typically they're 12 around, I might do 13 or 14 just to get it really squished in. All right, I made a cluster. Now I'm going to do, hmm, what's next? Add another little spot, I think. I've got a little gentle curve in there.
now I'm gonna do just a, a loop of double crochet to give myself a different line and I'm gonna do something quite fine I think here uh, I think I need a smaller hook this is pretty this is really pretty fine this is a fingering weight I think over the various ends so that I'm catching them up as I go. I don't have to worry as much about ends on something where no one's gonna see the back, but uh, basically it's a habit more than anything else. And you certainly don't want them working their way to the front. So the good thing about this is I can secure it and then leave a little, a little extra tail hanging out because no one's gonna see it and that will give it a little protection from working around to the front. Alright, I'm noticing I'm getting some little holes in here again. This, these triple crochets seem to have a loose top and they really want to make, make little holes, which is no good, but rather than go back and try to make texture, I'm going to use this as one of the spots where um, later where I put something three-dimensional on the top of it. So I'm going to carry on with my pattern and handle that hole problem later. There's the bit of double crochet around. Now I want some texture, a little bigger. I think. Should I grab one of these? a little spot in this corner. some bullions. I think this hook is too small for that. Yeah. <coughs> nah, it'll be fine.
All right, done my booleans. <coughs> so here's the thing. I've seen instructions on how to do booleans and my technique must be different from other people's because I always have like this thing showing up at the front and I can't get it to hang in the back except by force. So I always force it back. I'm gonna go sort of halfway down the booleans with my hook on where I'm going to secure it and I'm going to pick those all up on the back of my hook here again on the side of the piece and I'm going to take the end slide it through all of this and it's going to hold everything to the back and give it some structure I have no idea if I have stumbled on the way everybody does this or if I've innovated a technique hardly matters so now it's there, it's holding it. Looks much better in the front. And I'm gonna take these two ends that are now on the same size, side, tie a knot, because there is nothing wrong with a good knot. And then I have these ends that I'll have to uh, deal with. I'm gonna loop it around front to back once and then when I go over that with something, I'll, I'll uh, crochet them in. Now I have a texture spot. And a great way to add a little bit of something, a little bit of mohair. Let's see. Okay, so you do lots of lots of different crochet stuff. Ah, Dal Lama Gods. Hello, nice to see you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for asking. It's been a seriously rough month. We've had some uh, sort of major issues in family, but I think it's calming down now. So I'm uh, finally able to. I haven't been able to do any kind of complicated crafting. I've been like I've been knitting socks. Uh, which is fine. Delightful. Satisfies the crafting urge and I do not have to think about it. Uh, I couldn't even think about doing stuff like this for several weeks so I'm feeling really happy to get back to art. And uh, yeah, to answer your other question, um, I'm not making a blanket in this case. I'm gonna make um, a small piece of wall art. I'm aiming for eh, just something about kind of yay big. Little, little bigger than a binder because um, it's mostly an experiment. I want to find out how expensive it is to have these things framed. Um, I don't know how to do framing. I could stitch something onto a backing myself, but it's a pain in the ass. And I realized a little while ago when I was thinking about doing this, like there are professional framers. I should just find out what one costs. And I can't really find out in the abstract. I have to take a finished piece to a framer and say, how much will you charge me? So that's what I'm doing, making a couple little pieces And uh, yeah, seeing what that's what that's going to run me in in framing costs. Hmm. All right, we got some fuzz. run this end under a few more things. I'll make a couple more spots with the mohair while I've got it out. my favorite thing to make? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, you know, it really depends on my mood. I, I do so much crafting 
that uh, I kind of bounce between them. The, oh, I'm going to make this, this is my favorite thing to make. And oh, I'm going to make this, it's my favorite thing to make. Uh, it Usually whatever I just made is not my favorite thing to make. But I do have some favorites. I love to make a blanket. I just, there's something so wonderful about making something big and thinking about how cozy it's going to be and how nice it's going to look on someone's couch or bed. Uh, so I make an, quite a number of blankets and they're actually reasonably quick projects um, because you don't have to worry about how they fit or hang or if they're going to be itchy in like spots up by the neck. Um, you can kind of just go for it. So they're kind of, uh, they're kind of stress-free crafting. And sometimes when I feel like, uh, when I'm at the state where I feel like my yarn situation has gotten completely out of hand, um, uh, yeah, a blanket, let's, blanket project lets me fill an entire basket full of yarn and know that most of it is not coming back into my stash. So I love that. Um, I almost always have a sweater project on the go and I love uh, a nice simple top-down round yoke sweater both to make and to wear. Um, they're nice and mindless to make and they tend they're a very generous fit so I can kind of just go for it and know that it's gonna fit somebody nicely and comfortably. Um, and again it's it's kind of a mindless thing like you know I can make a, a sweater in uh, a couple weeks of TV watching uh, if it's one of these sort of simple um, yoke style or raglan style. Just straight forward. And uh, yeah, those are those are kind of my favorite comfort objects. Um, but I do love to make a wrap. It's kind of like a blanket, but fancier. I do have to worry a bit more about fit and hang and, uh, and level of detail. I used to make a lot of tea cozies. I think I might get back to those just because they're um, they're nice simple projects but they really showcase the yarn. I mean much like um, much like what I'm doing now where I'm you know because I'm working small with a lot of detail you can show a lot of stuff going on when you're working small. Uh, so with a tea cozy it's just it's not too big. Um, when I was uh, when I was doing a business and uh, making sure that I was always making minimum wage, then I uh, uh, could make a tea cozy in about three hours. So nice and satisfying and quick. Yeah, granny squares are intensely satisfying. I've got a couple granny square or sort of mad granny blankets. They're squares of various kinds, some grannies, some just like uh, double crochet and in different sizes, different yarns. And then it's a bit of a, a fun game to puzzle piece the things together. But it also means that I can have just sort of a basket and some squares and a growing pile of them and worry about assembly later. Right. There's three spots of mohair. I was going to... I thought I had a little spiral in here. Oh no, I didn't. I used it for something. Okay, I'm gonna just... just go around the edge of this and smooth it out. I think this piece is about the size that I want. Um, if this is your first time watching me do this, my way of working is that I make patches um, normally that are about hand sized, um, you know, bigger or smaller, depending on what I'm making, uh, with irregular um, but still reasonably smooth edges, and then I, I piece them together um, to, make, uh, to make the larger piece. So I just want to make this edge work, and then I'll put it in the basket and do some more stuff. I'm going to do a combination of double crochet and single crochet here. I'm starting with a little shell. Uh, I'm going to do one more to make it a bit dense. Yeah. And then I'll just do single crochets across the top here. And 
now I've got another little dip, so another little another little shell here. Oh, crocheted earrings and oh you're making some crocheted roses for the next project. Will those go in the center of a blanket? I've seen those like granny flower blankets and they're so retro, they're delightful. Alright, and here we have a finished patch, and uh, I'll make, you know, six or seven of these. So right now I just put it here and start building another one. Alright, I'm going to hit that big end button, but um, yeah, I hope to be back regularly, so come by and chat with me again. It's, uh, it's nice to hear from you all. See you.